Hi, y'all. This is BGP 1.2, and we're going to talk about how BGP builds loop-free paths. Seems really simple, but let's dive in and see how simple it really is. <clears throat> let's begin with some definitions. Now, in 1.1, I talked a little bit about the difference between network layer reachability information, like NLRI, and a route. So I'm going to repeat that here. For those who didn't watch 1.1, shame on you. You should have. But anyway, the NLRI is a reachable destination of any kind, whether it's a V4 address, a V6 address, whatever it is. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about address families much later in this series, but that gives you an idea to start with. An attribute is anything describing information about an NLRI. Now, I'm going to do things like policy markers, routing information, things like the next hop, whatever it happens to be. The route is what we call the NLRI plus the attributes. So a route in BGP is the NLRI plus the attributes. So the NLRI by itself is not a route. It has to be, the route has to be the NLRI plus the attributes. Now, we often confuse these in common everyday language. So you may hear me occasionally say, well, the routing information is transmitted here or whatever, when I'm actually talking about the route itself. A speaker is a device that runs BGP or a BGP process running on a device. Quite often, BGP is implemented as a separate application, much like um, NFR routing or BIRD or something like that, there is a separate application that runs BGP. So a speaker is a device or a process running on a device that implements BGP. A peer is a device running BGP that has a relationship with the local device. So in other words, if I'm router A and I am connected to router B and router B has a BGP adjacency with me, B is my peer. Now, the word peer is quite confusing in BGP land because it's used for this and it's used for many other things. And we'll try to talk about some of those other uses later on in this series. So let's begin by considering the autonomous system path. As a route is advertised or an NLRI is advertised and creates a route as it's being advertised through the network, such as 100 colon colon slash 64, the local AS is added to the AS path. So for instance, if 100 colon colon slash 64 is being advertised over here to AS 65002, what will happen is the route is advertised to D, D advertises 65003. At this point, the AS path will be 65003 and one, actually I did that backwards, it will be one, three, and then it's advertised to five. So now it will be one, three, five. Then it's advertised to two, but now two is only using it internally. So we don't really add that AS into the AS path when we're messing with it. And we'll talk a little bit about how this goes on. Now, one thing that is a common belief about the AS path is this is the path, the update, what's called the magical update has taken through the network. This is absolutely untrue. There is no update that runs end to end in an intradomain BGP network or even intradomain. Router C forms an update and sends that update to D. D takes that update apart and stores its components in memory. D then creates a new update to send to 65003. The router at the edge of 65003 takes that update apart, stores it in memory in pieces, and then creates a new update to send across AS65003. This continues throughout the network. There is no such thing as an update, a single update packet that passes through an entire network. This is very similar to RIP. There is no update in RIP that is carried edge to edge in a network. What happens here is we tend to think about something like IS to IS, where we have an LSU, and that is flooded edge to edge in the network. There is no LSU or LSP in BGP. The update is strictly a local matter. So this is not the path an update is taken through the network. Is this the path through which a particular route has passed to gather itself as reachability information? Well, that's not necessarily true 
either. Because what if I advertise 100 colon colon size 64 to 65,003, and then I advertise it to 65,005, and then AS 65,005 does a simple thing where it advertises an aggregate of slash 60 to AS 65,002. Well, that aggregate is going to look like it starts in AS 65,005. So it is also not the path through which the routing information or the NLRI has passed in order to reach me. Okay? Another thing it is not, it is not the path the traffic will take or packets will take to reach the described destination or the reachable destination. This is again, the, the aggregate is the perfect example of this situation. Now, these are some very, very simple examples. For instance, you could get a more complex example by saying 100 colon colon slash 64 is advertised to 65,003 and 4. They both advertise this reachable destination to or reachability information to 65,005, which then makes a local policy choice to advertise, say, the path through AS 65,003 to 65,002, but actually use the path through 65,004 to reach the destination. This is quite possible within an autonomous system. So all of these things are possible. Let's talk about a simple example of loop prevention in BGP. Now this is not really the way it's probably going to work in the real world, but I want to describe the loop-free algorithm or the way it determines whether or not something is a loop just as a very simple example. So 100 colon colon slash 64, is advertised by AS 65001, we'll just say 1, 2, 3. 3 advertises this same route to 2, and then 2 to 4, and then 4 back to 1. Now, as AS 65001 advertises this route to 65003, the AS path becomes 1, 3, or actually just 1. We'll talk about where things are added in just a minute. When it advertises the route, when 3 advertises the route to 2, the AS path becomes 1, 3. When 2 advertises it to 4, it is now 1, 3, 2. When 4 advertises it to 1, it is now 1, 3, 2, 4. Now you'll notice that 1 is still in the AS path. So what happens here is AS 65001 will see the 1 in the AS path and say, I already know about this route from with internally, somehow I know about this route, therefore I'm going to drop it. Now this also works if I'm just looking here, right? 1 advertises to 4, my AS path here is 1, then I advertise up to 3, my path here is 1, 3, or 1, 4, and then I advertise back, I still have 1 in my AS path, so I discard the route. So here's an interesting question. Where is the local AS actually added to the AS path? As you can tell what I'm talking about with AS path, I haven't described it very specifically here, but an AS path just records the set of ASs, again, not really through which the traffic will pass, or not even through which the NLRI has passed, but just records a path through the network. It's just a path through the network. And all I'm trying to do is make sure that my neighbor, if I, my peer, if I send traffic to them, is going to forward the traffic to the destination rather than looping the traffic in some way. So where is the local AS added to the AS path? Now you might think that it would be added here when I advertise the route from C up to D, but that is absolutely untrue. What's going to happen is, in fact, you might think because D is connected to an external or an, another BGP AS, a peer and another AS, so therefore this is called an eBGP connection. And I'll, again, I'll try to define these things better later on as we go, but I'm just trying to give you the basic concepts here without getting too much into the terminology. You might think that that is going to be added at router D in some way when the update's being built or something like that. In reality, that AS, the local AS number, is added to the AS path as D is advertising. It's not locally within D's memory. It's at the moment it advertises that route to AS 65003. You can actually verify this in the lab. You can set up 
a very similar network to this. We have a three or four routers, virtual routers, in AS65001, and there are peering routers here at 5003 and 5004. Then when you set this router up, what you can do is you can go here and you can set up an AS path filter using a regular expression of caret dollar sign. Now caret dollar sign in regex means an empty AS path. Yeah, I still know regex. That's crazy, isn't it? But what you will find is, is that in D, even though you would think that AS65001 is in the AS path, in D's memory, you will find that route is still advertised to 65003, even though you're telling D to only advertise routes with an empty AS path. That's because that AS is added to the path after the filtering takes place. Why is it this way? This is because the entire AS needs to look like a single thing. And normally, if you think of D, E, and C as kind of like being line cards or virtual devices within, or devices within a larger virtual device that's combined together to make a single device, you want the network to look the same from E and D to the outside world. So what you have to do is you have to add things at the moment it leaves the AS, not within the AS, in order to make this happen. So this allows your policy to be consistent. Now, again, let's look at a loop check. When does the loop check actually take place? So one advertises 100 colon colon size 64 to three. Three advertises this route to four. Four advertises the NLRI with the attribute so a route to, to back to 65,001. Now, E will drop the route because it sees AS 65001 in the AS path right here. But the question would be, why doesn't 65004, the router here at the edge of 65004, drop the route, rather than consuming the bandwidth and the processing power required to advertise that route to E, only to have E drop it? There are a lot of reasons this is true, that the, uh, that the loop check is done inbound into the eBGP speaker rather than outbound from a sending BGP speaker. The first is the implementation is a lot, lot simpler this way. It might not make sense to you, but from a coding perspective, it makes more sense to check on the inbound side rather than the outbound side. The second thing is, is because this AS, AS65001, might actually be split. It might have two parts, and these two parts may not have a connection in the middle. In this case, E wants to accept routes from AS65001, even though AS65001 is in the AS path. So this is really important. 65001, this operator, might use some other mechanism to prevent loops rather than the AS path. Now, let's talk about, I talked before about eBGP, so let's talk a little bit about iBGP versus eBGP, because these are important concepts. So, here we have this route, or this NLRI, this reachable destination, 100 colon colon slash 64. It is carried through AS65002 somehow, we won't talk about how at the moment, and it is advertised from A to C. Now, A is in AS65002, and C is in AS65001. Because these are in different autonomous systems, this means this is an eBGP connection. Now, typically, in eBGP, two things are true. First, I will advertise all the routes I have in my table, SANS or just or modulo the filters that I have set up outbound to an eBGP peer. The second thing is, is that when I advertise a route through eBGP, I set the next stop to some address on my local router. Usually this is going to be the route or the destination IP address that I am peering with my BGP peer with. This could be a loopback, this could be an interface address, and we'll talk about those options and why one might be better or worse later on. So here, however, when we get to C, C advertises this route, this 100 colon colon slash 64 to B. Now these two routers, or BGP speakers, are in the same autonomous system. Therefore, this is an internal or an interior or an iBGP connection or iBGP peering session. Now in this case, 
what's going to happen is there are a lot of things that won't happen or will, or will change or whatever as we're looking at the way BGP operates between eBGP and IBGP. In this case, B is not, or C is not going to change the next stop to itself. It's going to leave the next stop over here at A. Why does it do that? It does that because, again, A is 65,001 wants to appear to be a single thing to the outside world. If I'm going to be able to set policy over here at D before I advertise this route over to 65,004, then I don't really want to be changing my next stop at every stop in the IBGP network. So this is typically true of IBGP. Now there are different ways of changing that. You can use next stop self, blah, 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 but that's not the way it normally is. This means that whatever this peering address is over here at A, it needs to be reachable from D so that it so that D knows how to forward traffic over to this destination. So again, routes advertised between routers within the same AS or between BGP speakers within the same AS are typically not changed in any way. Now there are exceptions. We'll call those out later. So again, IBGP. This is an IBGP, this is an IBGP, these are EBGP. Just so you mark these out and get these in your head, what the difference is between these. Now, there are forwarding rules for routes in IBGP that are different than EBGP. Remember I said typically in EBGP, modulo any of your filters, you're going to advertise everything that's in your table to an EBGP speaker or to an EBGP peer. In IBGP, you are only going to advertise routes that you have learned from eBGP to IBGP speakers. So in other words, in this case, C will only advertise routes it has learned from A, not from D towards B, um, because D is an IBGP speaker from C's perspective. Why is this? How do we handle loop prevention in BGP? We handle it with this AS path. Well, guess what? Within an autonomous system, the AS path does not change. Therefore, I do not have any way to validate that the route passing between IBGP speakers through or within the same autonomous system is loop free. There could be a loop within that autonomous system. So we will actually look at in a later session here how the different ways that you can detect loops within or the different ways that this problem has been resolved within IBGP. So next, we will be talking, in fact, about BGP convergence and how BGP converges, so you'll understand a little bit about how that happens.